Hi there, and welcome back to the Yoga Library. In today's 60-minute practice, we are working through a slower vinyasa practice. Some un uncomplicated postures that we're going to hold for up to five breaths. So slow in tempo, but still quite creative, quite moving. We're going to focus on the inner and outer hips as well. So gomukhasana, as well as goddess posture. Grab straps or blocks or anything that is going to enhance your practice. Be sure to modify this class as well to make it exactly what you need. And if you're starting to play this with me, then we're going to start it on the count of one, two, three. And we're going to start on our spines with our feet together and our knees wide. So just allowing the arms to fall out by the sides. And just taking a moment here, feet together. Knees drop just to relax the lower body. And if this feels really intense, you can always place bricks underneath the knees, but see if you can just offload a little bit of tension here, and just try to find some gentle length along the inside of the thighs. Maybe place one hand on the belly, the other hand on your heart. And then so when you breathe, you start to make connection with the palms. And I find that just feeling the breath somehow lets us drop in a little easier. By resting the hands on the belly and chest, you're really able to spark a connection with the breath. And as you begin to arrive, start to engage with the body as well. Notice how the legs feel. Are your shoulders quite tense? Are you working with any injury today that perhaps you might need to be aware of? Or do you maybe just have to take it a little bit easier for yourself today? Modify whatever you need. If it's to make it easier, do that. If it, you want to make it harder as well, you can. We're going to begin straighten the left leg, take the right knee into the belly, and then just hug it in close towards you. Hug it in to start to wiggle the Ankle little circles, little rotations, maybe move it side to side. And then we're gonna kick the right leg to the sky and just grab behind the thigh or behind the calf, whatever's accessible to you, whatever feels available. Without pulling, without forcing, just find that natural edge and breathe into the back of the right leg. So a gentle stretch to start. Maybe noticing if today you're feeling quite tight. We're coming into a half happy baby. Bend into the right knee. Press the left palm into the left thigh. Take a moment here. You can always kick the right foot out to the right side if that feels nice. And then let's re-bend the right knee. Release it out. Take the left knee into the belly, hold it in close towards you. Hug it tight, little wiggle of the ankle. A little bit of movement side to side. Left leg extends to the sky, hands behind the thigh, behind the calf. Whatever feels accessible, whatever is right. Breathing into the back of the left leg this time. Good. 
Coming in to that half happy baby, bending into the left knee, guide the right thigh back down with the right palm. And if you want to kick the left foot out to the side, you can. Rebend the left leg and then just release the foot but kick it to the sky. So we're kicking that left leg high. Take the hands really gently behind the leg again or you can reach them further beyond the leg. That's also fine. Lift your shoulders off the ground. Press your low back into the mat and then lift your right foot off the ground as well. And then we're just going to swap the legs out. Make sure you breathe. Keep trying to see if you can lift those shoulder blades off as well. Keep the legs long. You can even point the toes if that feels better or flex the feet. Whatever feels right, whatever helps you keep the legs stable. Beautiful. Lower both legs, lift the arms up. Reach them behind you. And then release. Lift the belly up. Really, really gentle stretch. Bending both of the knees. Grab behind the back of the thighs, behind the knees. And then just rock up and down two or three times. Massaging the spine, giving yourself enough momentum that on the third or fourth rock up, you can cross your ankles, take your hands down. You can also step them back in a different way, yeah? You're gonna come into that high plank, you're gonna drop the knees if that feels right, if that feels better. And then you're gonna to start to engage your ujjayi pranayama in through the nose, out through the nose. Take it all the way onto the belly slowly. Tops of the feet press into the mat. Take your forearms down, take your elbows underneath your shoulders, then imagine you're dragging the mat towards you. Lift through the chest. And then if it feels nice, gently lift the elbows, not too much. You don't wanna dump into the spine. You don't wanna fuse the low back. Just take a little bit more length through the belly if you can. And then take the elbows out to the sides. Take your hands underneath your shoulders. Take a child's pose. Remembering that at any point that you need, you can come back to this space. Come back into your body. Come back to your breath. Let's take an inhale together. Exhale, side out the mouth. We're gonna rise into our tabletop. And then you can either have your hands pointing forward, your fingertips rather, or you can spin the hand so the fingertips are facing you instead. You'll feel if that feels wrong, and if it feels wrong, let it go. But if you're with me, drop the belly, lift the gaze, arch the back. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin to chest. Drop belly, lift gaze, arch back. Exhale, round, tuck chin to chest. And drop belly, lift gaze, arch back. Exhale, round again. Take it back to a neutral spine. Take the hands back to the front two corners. Flip the toes, lift the hips up, downward facing dog. And just keep a little bend in the knees at the start, right? Find some length in the back of the body. A little paddle the legs out, bending the knees one at a time, maybe shifting the hips from side to side, not the head yes, shake it no. Shake it out. And then reset into that downward facing dog. Take three breaths. Beautiful. On that third inhale, take the right leg up. 
And then exhale, big step between the hands, plant the foot down, drop the back left knee, inhale the arms, lift them high. Exhale, frame the right foot, step to the top of your mat, inhale to that halfway. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, rise, gaze up high. Exhale, hands to center. Inhale again, lift to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Slow it down. Inhales, you're halfway. Exhale, the left foot steps back. Drop the knee. Inhale, the arms to lift. Exhale, frame the right. Step to your high plank. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga or knees chest. Inhale to that upward or that low cobra, your choice. Exhale it back. Big breath in. Exhale it out. And then inhale the left leg to lift. Exhale, big step, drop the knee. Inhale the arms to lift. Exhale, frame the left foot. Then let the inhale bring you back to that halfway. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, breathe it in. Again, lift to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhales your half. Exhale the right foot back. Drop knee. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, frame the left. Step to your high plank. Inhale, hold it there. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Another one, big breath in. Exhale it out. Start to tiptoe your feet all the way to the top of the mat. Soften the knees. Grab hold of opposite elbows. Start to drive them down to the floor. Keep that bend in the knee. Start to breathe into the low back, right? Find that space. Release the elbows, slow to rise all the way to stand. Noticing each and every vertebrae as it unravels. And then when you get there, roll the shoulder blades down the spine, palms facing forward, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. Feeling grounding all the way from the base of the feet, all the way up through the shins, the thighs, past the navel, find that tall length in the spine. Fingertips spread wide here. Take your hands to heart center. Find an intention for this practice, something beyond the moves, beyond the sweat, beyond the asana. On the inhale, lift the arms to the sky. And on the exhale, fold forward, hands to the floor. Inhales your half. Exhale it back. Your choice, knees, chest, or chaturanga. One exhale. Inhale, low cobra, awkward facing. Exhale it back, downward facing dog. Breathing here, three breaths. Lengthening that ujjayi pranayama. So you're breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. Finding an audible sound with each inhale, exhale. Gaze to palms, bend the knees, hop, step, or float to the front. Inhales your half. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise, gaze up high. Exhale the center. 
Inhale again, lift to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, start half. Exhale it back, knees, chest, or chaturanga. You can jump, you can step, your choice. Inhale to that up dog or low cobra. Exhale it back, downward facing dog. If you have the tendency of speeding it up, try and slow it down. Slowing it down makes it harder, right? Harder to balance, longer holds. So sometimes we speed it up thinking that we're gonna get a little bit of extra sweat, but all we do is actually make the practice a little bit easier for ourselves. So having patience, gaze to the palms, bend the knees, hop, step, or float to the front. Inhales at half. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise, gaze to the sky. Exhale, the hands to center. One more, lift to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhales, you're halfway. Exhale it back, chaturanga. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. Gaze to palms, bend the knees, hop, step, or float to the front. Inhale as you're half. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise, gaze up high. Exhale, hands to center. Inhale to your chair pose. Arms strong alongside the ears, toes touch, heels slightly apart, or if the spine feels tender, or this feels really bad in the low back, then I want you to take your feet hip distance apart instead. And then imagine you have a beach ball between the palms, right? Sometimes they get a little bit lazy, but if you drop that ball, it stops being fun. Set an inch lower. And we really are in this together. So try and stay with me today. Spread the toes wide, then plant into the toes, lift the heels off the floor. Use the breath. Belly onto thighs, arms reach to the front wall or to the front of wherever you are. Take the hands to the mat, split the knees, come into your crow pose or take a wide legged squat instead, come into malasana. Breathe. Two more breaths wherever you are. Jump back, step back, vinyasa out, or if you want to, you can step straight into your downward facing dog. We meet in down dog. Right leg lifts to the sky. On that exhale, big step between the hands, Warrior one to rise, arms strong by the ears. And for this warrior one, you're trying to square the hips to the front. So that might mean taking a wider step, right? A bend in the knee, a little twist of the hips of the right hips moving in line with the left side. The arms are strong alongside the ears. And if this hurts the low back at all, then just tuck the tailbone under if you can breathe. And if it really hurts, feel free to just spin onto your left toe. Maybe close your eyes. Draw the rib cage in if you feel it flaring out. We're participating in a moving meditation right now. Let's take it slowly, interlace the hands behind the back, pivot the left heel in, lift through the chest. 
Exhale, humble warrior, right shoulder. On the inside of the right thigh, let the arms come up and overhead. Now try to drop the left hip so it's in line with the right. Try to align both shoulders as well. Breathe. Beautiful. Inhale, bring it up to your warrior two. Slow with your transitions if you can. Both heels in line, the right foot parallel to the long edge, the back foot parallel to the short edge with a slight turn in. Making sure you can see your front two toes from the inside of the right thigh. Relaxing your face, relaxing your jaw. Beautiful. On the next inhale, straighten out that right leg, step the left foot in, come into your trikonasana, right arm reaches forward, find length, the left hip stays stacked, the right hand to the inside of the right foot. The outside is also fine if that's in your practice, and the left arm starts to lift up, and you can also use your bricks. You can use a thick book if that helps, but bricks are really good investments. They make everything a little bit easier. They really help with your alignment as well. Inhale, lift up, slide the left heel in so the toes are wide, the heels are in, we're coming into goddess, bending into the knees. Hands to center, hands in front of the chest here. And then just take a moment here, close your eyes, see how that feels. Maybe sit a little lower if you can. Beautiful. Inhale, lift up. Heels out, toes in, hands to the lower back. Inhale to lift. Exhale, hinge from the hips. Coming into a wide-legged stance, Brasarita. Hands glued to the mat. Exhale, start to bend into the elbows. If you have any inversion practice, you can take it. You can take a tripod, you can take a pinch of press if that feels nice. Otherwise, hands Glue to the floor, you're pulling up on the back of the knees and the thighs, you're sending the weight into the balls of the feet. Not so much that the heels lift, but that you feel that length behind the back of the legs. If you're upside down, stay there, you have got time. If you're not upside down, lift up halfway. Take your peace fingers around the big toes and then bend the elbows again. Two more breaths. Beautiful. On the inhale, lift up. If you're upside down, take it down, wide legs. We're gonna lift the heels. You might need to shorten your stance for this. We're gonna lift the heels, spin on the toes, come into Gomukhasana. If it's really not possible and you sort of ended up like this, that's fine, drag the foot. Try to come onto both sit bones. Left knee is stacked over the right. Both feet flexed, sitting on a block if that feels wrong to have both butt cheeks down or even straightening that bottom leg. On the inhale, lift the chest. On the exhale, bend the elbows. On the inhale, lengthen again. And on the exhale, take the hands down, bow the head. Breathe. Beautiful. On the inhale, lifting up, we're gonna move in the direction of the top foot. Watch me first, see how it goes. You pivot around, you come all the way back, forward, spin, spin, spin. You're coming into lizard. It might mean stepping it back a little bit, drop from the hips, come onto fingertips, dip through the chest, or dip through the hips, lift the chest. And then inhale, come onto both forearms, or take your elbows onto bricks. Breathe. Beautiful. Coming onto both hands. Right arm's gonna lift up. 
You're gonna step into your side plank. Coming onto your right forearm, because I love this transition. <laughs> Rolling all the way around. So the left arm lifts. Coming onto both forearms. Hip square, hold it here. Beautiful, walk the feet to the middle of the mat so the bum rises. Gaze to the toes. See how that feels? So you're sort of gazing through the elbows. Then gaze back to the fingers. You're gonna take your knee to your thumbs two times, or you're gonna take your favorite leg high, come up into Pinchamayarasana. Breathe. Maybe kiss the th thumbs two more times if you want more strength. Otherwise, we meet in a child's pose. And if you're in your pincha, you have two more breaths. Beautiful. We meet in downward facing dog. Left leg lifts to the sky. Big step between the hands. Warrior one to rise. And again, that might mean a wider stance with that right foot. Left hip pulls back in line with the right. There's that little tuck of the tailbone and you feel that length behind the back. Right shin, arms lift up. Be mindful not to dump into the back right. Tuck it in. You should feel a nice opening in that right leg. Maybe close your eyes, find a moment here. Interlace the hands behind the back, pivot the heel in a little bit. Inhale to lift the chest. Exhale, humble warrior. Beautiful. So these postures are uncomplicated, right? We've been here before, but we're holding a little longer today. Each inhale allows you to find a little bit more strength. Each exhale, you move a little bit further. On the inhale, spin up to your warrior two. Reset. Relax your face, relax your jaw. Slow it down. And if you can do this whole practice with your eyes closed, and you know you're in the zone, obviously it's a little harder in an in online space, but try and listen to the instructions instead. Straighten the left leg, step the right foot in one step. Reach the left arm forward, keep the hip stacked, come into Trikonasana. The left hand can be on the inside of the shin, the outside on a brick, right? You can also bind the toes, come all the way down, as long as that doesn't drop your right hip. Breathe. Make sure you're breathing. On the inhale, lift up. Slide the right heel in. This time interlace the hands to grab hold of, interlace the hands behind you to grab hold of opposite elbows to reverse fist bump behind your back or to reverse prayer. Any option is fine. We're gonna take it back into our goddess. Breathe. Maybe lift the right heel. Try not to carry the tension in the face, right? Sometimes we find this practice can be quite challenging and we start to furrow our brows, right? Relax the face. Release the right foot, lift the left heel this time. Let the breath distract you. Maybe lift both heels off the floor, see how that feels. 
Beautiful, release them down. Straighten out the legs, toes in, heels out. And when you re-interlace, it's by the fingertips, right? Interlace the fingertips, lift through the chest. Exhale, hinge from the hips, let the arms come overhead. Now, if you have an inversion practice, you can take it. Otherwise, just stay where you are. So I might have a little play with my wide-legged handstand press, but you can also take pinch a press. You can take your tripod. Right, the slower you move, the stronger these movements actually are, right? My first press was in a slower class. If you're not upside down, lift up halfway, grab hold of the back of the shins, and then bend the elbows, fold again. If you're upside down, take three more breaths. Let's all take it back down, wide legs. Coming up onto fingertips. So the transition, if you found it really hard, take your feet closer, lift the heels, spin all the way around. Sometimes a shorter stance makes it easier for us to land in Gomukhasana. Both butt cheeks on the ground, otherwise a brick underneath you. Maybe straighten the bottom leg if you need to. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bend from the elbows. And then inhale again to lengthen. Fingertips in front of you. Elbows bend out to the sides. Keep trying to ground both sit bones back down. As you fold, they want to lift. Beautiful. Inhale, lifting up. Spinning in the direction that you came in. So slowly spinning onto the feet all the way forward into that bent left knee. Now I'll probably step it back a little bit to make this a little bit possible. You're coming into your lizard, which might mean elbows onto books or a brick. Maybe the elbows are all the way on the floor. Three, maybe wriggle back and forth side to side. Beautiful. Coming on to the hands. If you haven't dropped the hip yet, I know I haven't. Just have a little opening here, right? We love a little bit of balance. Resquare the hips, right hand down, left arm lifts. Step to your side plank, take your time. Step too fast and you might just fall back. Come onto that left forearm. Right arm to lift. Keep pressing into that left forearm. Find stability, keep the right hip lifting. Come onto both forearms. You can always come out of this, come into a low cobra instead, otherwise you're following my lead. Walk the feet to the middle of the bum rise. Gaze to your toes, right? Gaze through the elbows, keep pressing into the forearms. Lift, lift, lift. How close can you walk the feet towards the arms? Gaze to the thumbs, maybe kiss two times. Maybe you're in pincha already. Maybe kiss two more times. Maybe take a child's pose. We'll meet in down dog, but you have two more breaths wherever you are. We're going to meet in a downward facing dog. Right leg lift to the sky. Take a big step between the hands. Arms lift up. So we're in a high lunge this time. It's different than that warrior one. You're on the ball of the back foot this time. We're gonna twist. You can drop the back left knee if you want a little break in that twist. You can wrap all the way around into a bind if it's possible. Wherever you're going, 
You're gazing past that right shoulder. Two more breaths. Beautiful, frame the right foot. Plant the left foot under. Place the right hand on a brick if you need to. Stick the knee into the armpit. Lift the left arm high. Option to stay here. Option to lift the toes. Grab hold of that right foot. Lift it off the ground and come into your bind. Breathe. We're all gonna frame the left, right foot again. Spin onto the left toe, reach your right leg up high. Take another big step between the hands. Arms lift up all the way. Finding balance, we're pressing into the right foot, lift the left knee in, squeeze the elbows in close towards you and then kick that left foot forward. You can also reach your arms up to the sky if you want. I find that sometimes gives us a little more energy to lift that left foot. Bend the left knee, take hold of the heel. We're coming into our pistol squat. Try not to move too slow here, right? The slower you move, the harder it actually is. Unless you're wanting to make it harder, in which case, slow it down. I love a little bit of slow flow. Take both feet high to the sky. You're in Navasana. Lower to the low back. Hands to center on the inhale, lift up. On the exhale, cross, cross up, cross the ankles, take the hands down, jump back, step back, come through a vinyasa or go straight to your down dog. Left leg lifts to the sky. Big step between the hands. Arms lift up. On the exhale, twist across. Right elbow to the outer left thigh. Maybe you're binding, right? I'll show the unbound variation for this one, but if you're binding, you're binding the right arm around and underneath the left thigh, and that left arm binds behind the back to grab underneath it. Anywhere you are, you're gazing past that left shoulder. You're playing with your balance. Beautiful. Frame the left foot. Spin the right heel under, right? So you're coming into a warrior two stance with the back foot. The right arm lifts up. Maybe you stay here, right? In which case, you'll just frame the foot again and come back where you were. Maybe you lift the toes, grab hold of the outer edge of the foot, lift it up, kick it forward. Take the head through the hole you've created. Right, take the right hand down, kick the left leg high. So that might mean just framing the foot first, spinning on the right toe, kick the left leg back up. Big step again between the hands. Arms lift up. Big press up, right knee into the belly. That one was a little hard for me. Kick that right foot forward, shoulders back. Maybe the arms are reaching high, otherwise you're drawing the energy in. Bending at the right knee, coming into your pistol squat. Maybe you stay with a bent leg. Maybe you're straightening it out for this one. Again, slow it down if you can, right? Always slow it down if you can, but if you're really struggling here and you always have a crash landing, move a little faster. Moving faster, like I said, often makes it easier. We think the opposite, but slowing it down makes everything much harder. It makes us much stronger. Slowly lower. Think about a slow chaturanga, right? That's a lot harder than blowing through it. <laughs> Inhale the arms up to lift. Exhale, lift it up. Cross your ankles, hands down. We'll do this one together, step it back. Slow on that chaturanga. See what I mean? Inhale, upward facing. Exhale it back, downward facing. Big breath in. Exhale it out. 
Gaze to the front of the mat, bend the knees, hop, step, or float to the front. Inhales your halfway. Exhale the fold. Inhale to lift up. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Let the toes be out, heel slightly, and you're gonna come into Malasana, into that squat. We're gonna play around with Bird of Paradise. If you wanna skip Bird of Paradise, you can. In which case, just take your right hand down and your left arm up and hold that space, right? If you're coming into Bird of Paradise, you're actually taking the right arm underneath of the right leg, wrapping your left arm around, lifting the bum halfway. Take that left foot in the middle of your mat, rise to your right toes, squeeze your navel, lift all the way up. When you found your balance, maybe kick that right leg to the right side. If you have full compass, you can take it. I've demonstrated it before, but for the purpose of this class, we'll stay here together. Right, easy to get it, but how easy is it to hold for five breaths? Take it down without just dropping down. Take it back through center. Same option, switch sides, either an extension, right? Arms long or a bind. Lift the left heel, breathe, breathe, breathe. And if you really want to try something new, try to gaze in the opposite direction of the foot. Breathe. Find something that's not moving to look at. Take it back down. Beautiful. Hands to the mat, step back. Knees, chest, chaturanga, or straight to down dog. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Right knee to right wrist for your pigeon. Keeping that right foot flexed, sitting on a brick if you need to. We're coming onto the forearms. Coming onto the forehead. And if that feels like too much, you can take your forehead onto a brick instead. Beautiful. On the inhale, lifting up. Roll into your right hip, swing your left leg around. We're coming into square pose. So we're gonna try to stack, and I'll face you, try to stack the left ankle on top of the knee. Let the shins be in line, which might mean that this right or left knee is floating off the ankle. That's fine, that might change when you hinge but you can also place a brick underneath you. You could also, if this feels really wrong, keep that right ankle in towards you. Take the top leg on a brick at a 90 degree bend, okay? Those are both your options. You're gonna hinge forward wherever you are. So notice that my leg is floating, but as I start to hinge forward, and sometimes it feels like you're, you've got a, your ankles on a knot or something, but as you fold forward and as you relax, sometimes that gap starts to narrow. Breathe. Two more breaths.
walk the hands back in towards you. You're gonna straighten your bottom leg. You're gonna keep hold of this left leg. I'm gonna spin back forward just so that I have some room. Take the left foot on the inside of the right elbow. Take that left elbow around. Give the left leg a little wiggle. We're coming into elephant trunk and maybe into kundanyasana. If you wanna play with eight angle, you're welcome to. If you're not really sure what any of these things is, that's fine too. Cross your right hand over your left foot. Bend the left knee, left hand comes up. Take the elbow in underneath that left leg. So again, I'll show you for the purpose of the demo. Elbow goes in, out to the side. It has to come down again, but try to lift the glute to see if you have a bit more space, right? Maybe you can kick your foot into the hand, take the head through the hole you've created, right? What you wanna do is try to bend that knee and get it to rest on top of that left elbow. Then you're gonna slide your bum back. You're gonna try to flex both feet, lift your bum off the ground. So again, I'm gonna demonstrate from this way so you can see that my butt lifts off the ground. You can also place your hands on bricks. Yeah? And then if you want to, you can just take that right foot in towards you, tilt forward, take that right foot through, take kundinyasana, back to down dog. I've got a little bit of a wall in my way, but back to down dog. Quite a hard transition that, so don't worry if it's not in your practice, cross your ankles, jump back. We're gonna switch sides, left knee to left wrist this time. And I have a couple of workshops on the library, right? Some classes that will help you get into some of these harder asanas. But if you ever just want to reach out to me and ask me questions about it, you're more than welcome to. Come onto forearms. Maybe the rest, maybe rest onto your forehead. Slow it down. Coming up, slowly roll into the left hip, swing that right leg around. Again, you're stacking the shins, right? But the ankle over top of the left knee, the shins stacked. When you hinge, you might fold. So if you're here, don't be alarmed. Or the ankle's on a brick and that left ankle is actually closer towards you. Don't force it. It's really a tight posture. So take your time. The more you're able to relax, the more you're able to relax the low body, the glutes, the easier it is. If you feel pain in the knee, just stop where you are. You've gone too far. Beautiful. Come out slowly. Straighten the bottom leg. Take that right ankle in towards you, right foot into the elbow, right elbow comes around. And I'll demonstrate with the bricks just for reference in case you have bricks by you. I'll have to speed it up on this one though, just because 
the slower you move, the harder it is. And I'm not really sure I have the stamina for it. Left hand into right foot. Bend the knee, let the butt cheek lift. Right elbow is going in the inside of the knee, out to the side and down. So there's this internal rotation of the shoulder that's happening, right? And the bricks actually make it pretty easy for that leg to stick. If you wanna play with the bind, right? You need quite uh, open hamstring. So don't feel that if you can't do that, that you're not able to move past that posture because they're quite different things. Press into the bricks, lift the bum, lift the foot. Maybe you stay there, maybe you cross that left foot underneath you, come into Kundanyasana. You can either make your way back to down dog or you can try to take it straight back through. We're gonna finish in a wide-legged fold, toes up, arms forward. Rest your head. And don't worry if you're not able to fold in half, just place your hands down and hinge as much as you can. Slowly start to rise. Take your feet forward. Reach your arms up. We're gonna take it all the way down onto the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. If there's anything else you want from this class, you can take it a little spinal twist, a final inversion. Otherwise, just rest.
start to feel your fingertips and toes. Reach your arms overhead like you're waking yourself up for the first time. Roll to your right side. Make your way up into a cross-legged position with me, eyes closed, palms facing up. Noticing how you feel now versus how you felt at the start. If there's anything else that you need at all, If there's anything else you need to release, you can do it on the next exhale. Let's take an inhale. Exhale it out. Hands to heart center. Come back to your original intention. Let it flood your minds in a clear mind. Thumb to third, I thank yourself for the space and time. And thank you for sharing it with me, always. Until next time. <laughs>